Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service Podcasts. In this podcast, we'll dive into one of the 17 sustainable development goals, life below water. We'll look at current challenges and review global and EU efforts to ensure the sustainability of our oceans. Ready to plunge into this subject with us? Ours is a watery planet. Around 70% of it is covered by water. Moreover, oceans contain 80% of all life forms, produce half of the Earth's oxygen, and are key to regulating the climate. In addition, ocean and seas are a source of income for many people around the world. In the EU, the blue economy provides for 4.5 million direct jobs in sectors ranging from fisheries, maritime transport and coastal tourism to more innovative ones such as renewable ocean energy and the blue bioeconomy. But we're putting all these at risk. The effects of climate change caused by increasing greenhouse gas emissions are devastating for oceans. They result in rising water temperatures acidification, increased flooding and loss of marine biodiversity. These, combined with other man-made stresses, such as pollution and overfishing, reduce the resilience of oceans and threaten the entire planet and our own future on it. So, what is the EU doing to protect our oceans? Let's hear Karin Friedrich Skolart and Karin Jacobs from the European Parliamentary Research Service. To manage maritime activities sustainably and cope with different environmental pressures, the EU has implemented over the years a wide range of policies. The first and most obvious one is the Common Fisheries Policy. It is one of the oldest EU policies and it has been reformed several times to better respond to sustainability challenges. Also, the maritime transport sector and its ports are earmarked as important blue economy sectors. They play a crucial role as well in reaching SDGs 14's objectives at both EU and international level. The EU thereby stands for cleaner and green maritime shipping by reducing CO2 emissions and a better energy and environmental performance of this sector. Regarding the EU Green Deal and its Fit for 55 package, ports will thereby become clean energy hubs of their own. And because marine and maritime policies and activities are connected, in 2007, the European Commission launched an integrated maritime policy covering action in areas such as maritime spatial planning, the promotion of the blue economy, integrated maritime surveillance, sea basin strategies and marine research. Other new initiatives under the European Green Deal also play an important role in ocean governance and sustainable blue growth. For example, the 2030 Biodiversity Strategy, the strategy to increase the EU's electricity production from offshore renewable energy sources, the new guidelines on aquaculture, or the just-mentioned Fit for 55 package, which aims to bring EU legislation in line with the target of reducing net greenhouse gas emissions by at least 55% by 2030. Also worth mentioning is the European Commission's proposal to include maritime shipping in the EU emissions trading system. Indeed, now the Marine Strategy Framework Directive adopted in 2008 introduced an integrated approach to the protection of marine ecosystems. It set 11 descriptors addressing various pressures such as eutrophication and marine litter to help EU countries achieve a good environmental status in their seas. The problem of marine litter, in particular plastics, has gained increasing attention over the past years. Since 2019, the EU adopted two new directives to fight against it. One directive updated the rules on maritime port reception facilities for the collection of waste from ships. The other is entirely new and aims to prevent and reduce the top 10 single-use plastics most commonly found on Europe's beaches as well as discarded fishing gear. The problem is also addressed in the Sustainable Development Goal number 14, which focuses on life below water and includes 10 targets and related indicators to protect oceans from marine pollution, acidification, overfishing and other threats. And the EU's conservation efforts seem to have paid off. Water quality has improved or is improving, fishing practices have become more sustainable 
and some stocks are recovering, but global threats remain. That's why the EU must continue to play a leading role in shaping international ocean governance and help achieve the UN goal of a healthy marine ecosystem. Let's look into that. The external dimension of the common fisheries policy regulates the activities of EU vessels beyond EU waters and ensures they're based on the same principles as those inside EU waters. Through the Sustainable Fisheries Partnership Agreements, the EU also gives financial and technical support to the fishing fleets of countries such as Morocco and Mauritania in exchange for fishing rights in their territorial waters. The EU also contributes to international research efforts in the high seas, and as the world's biggest seafood market, it's a heavy weight in the fight against illegal fishing. It also strongly influenced the recently concluded agreement to end harmful fisheries subsidies in the context of the World Trade Organization, and together with the EU member states represented at the International Maritime Organization, it's working to reduce the CO2 emissions of international shipping. The IMO has included the Mediterranean and the Baltic Seas, as well as northwestern European waters, in the list of special areas that deserve increased protection from ship pollution. The North Sea and the Baltic Sea are earmarked as airborne emission control areas where no sulfur from marine fuels or nitrogen is allowed, and the Mediterranean Sea will acquire a similar status as of 2025. The EU is also deeply committed to achieving an ambitious result in the ongoing UN negotiations to ensure the sustainable use of marine biological diversity in areas beyond national jurisdiction. These areas cover 95% of the ocean and provide invaluable ecological, economic, social, scientific and food security benefits to humanity. But they are faced with growing threats, including pollution, over-exploitation and the already visible impacts of climate change. That's why at the One Ocean Summit in Brest earlier this year, the EU took an important step forward. Let's hear it from Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. It is time indeed for an alliance. Today, the European Union and the French Presidency of the Council are launching the High Ambition Coalition on the High Seas for a coalition for adaptation still this year of the High Seas Treaty. We need it now. Only together we will be able to turn the tide. Furthermore, the EU's International Ocean Governance Agenda, first adopted in 2016, set out an action plan to reduce pressure on the oceans and seas to create the conditions for a sustainable blue economy and to strengthen international ocean research. And following a series of consultations and online dialogues, the Commission announced the update of its International Ocean Governance Agenda to address threats such as pollution, climate change and biodiversity loss. Over the past years, the European Parliament has adopted many resolutions calling for the EU to take a leading role to help achieve the sustainable management of oceans and seas, pushing for better international ocean governance and partnerships with key players. Frederick Skolars has more details on this. In a resolution on the International Oceans Agenda, the Parliament called for a number of actions to improve ocean governance, such as greater attention to marine litter and a moratorium on deep-sea mining. The Parliament also strongly supported the target of protecting at least 30% of EU waters and pointed to the importance of maritime spatial planning. In a recent resolution on the blue economy from May 2022, MEPs drew attention to the importance of innovation for all blue economy activities. They also called on the EU to prohibit environmentally damaging extractive industrial activities in marine protected areas and to promote fair and low-impact models of tourism that do not damage coastal areas, especially in developing countries. Let's hear the rapporteur, Isabel Carvalhaj. Protected marine areas can be very beneficial for fisheries and sustainability of resources. Investment based on science needs to be made to have protected marine areas which don't just exist on paper but guarantee sustainability of resources in the long term and the economic sustainability for all fisheries and not just some. 
Furthermore, the Parliament's Committees on Environment and Development adopted an own initiative report on the implementation and delivery of the Sustainable Development Goals, including SDG 14 on life below water. The report calls on the EU to make the SDGs a priority in all its policies and to improve governance. The report was voted in plenary on the 22nd of June, ahead of the UN High-Level Forum on Sustainable Development in July. So stay tuned for more details. And if you would like to know more on this subject, check out Frederick Scholart and Karin Jakob's full policy brief on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.